Puts it up. Yes! Michael Jordan. It almost went in. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Unbelievable. Brings two punches. As good as it gets. It is an opening night unlike any other in the 74-year history of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Welcome to Dayton, Ohio, for the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual. The Sunbelt Conference Tournament Champion, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, against the Southwestern Athletic Conference Tournament Champs, the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. The winner here to advance to the next round to take on the number one overall seed of the tournament, the Kentucky Wildcats in Louisville. And why is there such an added buzz here tonight? The president is in attendance. President Obama just coming onto the floor about 30 seconds ago, the first time a sitting president has attended an NCAA tournament game since 1994, when President Clinton was at the Final Four in Charlotte. Hello, friends. Jim Nance along with Steve Kerr, Clark Kellogg. It is special. We open up the tournament tonight, and the president is here, Clark. The first fan at the first two of the first four. It doesn't get any better than that, partner. That's right. And then on top of it, you've got these four teams we'll see tonight, like all the teams in the tournament. This is what they've been playing for all season long, Steve, to get to the big dance. It's a great atmosphere. we got a great month of basketball ahead of us and a terrific way to get it rolling tonight. Well, we got BYU and Iona later on tonight on this floor, but let's talk about game one. Take us through Western Kentucky. Well, the Hilltoppers, four of the top eight players for the Hilltoppers are freshmen, and one of the very best of those four freshmen is George Penn, an outstanding interior player, good size, nice touch, excellent hands, and an aggressive mindset. He'll be fun to watch. In the backcourt, though, the guy who makes him go, I think, is Jamal Crook. He leads him in assists and steals. He's a junior, but he's also a guy who can create his own shot. Meanwhile, for Mississippi Valley State, we've got a senior-laden team here, led by this man, Paul Crosby, the SWAC Conference Player of the Year. He can go inside and out. He's very, very strong, and he's going to play his power game. But this is a club that really likes to get up and down, and Kevin Burwell is the man who makes it happen. Nine points, almost five assists a game. This club is going to trap and try to speed everything up, and he's the guy to get it going. The tournament about to get started. Western Kentucky and Mississippi Valley State. The president is settled in, and we'll be back with it in just a moment. Hilltoppers and Delta Devils coming up here. Game one, tonight's viewing guide brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. Call Star Star Dove Men to access the viewing guide on your mobile phone. Again, Iona and BYU later tonight here in Dayton. Tomorrow on this floor, Vermont against Lamar. The winner of that one will have a date with North Carolina in the next round. South Carolina goes against California tomorrow as well. So good to have Tracy Wolfson with us as well on the crew. And Tracy with an interview before the tip. Go ahead, Tracy. That's right. I'm with Western Kentucky head coach Ray Harper. And Ray, what a season. You take over a struggling program midway through, and now here you are in the NCAA tournament. How did you get this team to believe? I don't know. Uh, they, these kids have been resilient. They keep bouncing back and couldn't be more proud of a group of young men. So how do you keep it going? We just got to keep doing what we do, and that's defending in the half court and taking care of the basketball. I know we'll play hard, and we'll just see what happens. We wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much. Thank you, Tracy. Jim? All right. Thank you, Tracy. Since he was named the full-time head coach, on February the 19th, the Hilltoppers haven't lost. They're 6 0. Tip off coming up on True TV. Coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament is sponsored by Northwestern Mutual, the United States Postal Service, and by Mercedes Benz. Back in Dayton, tip off just a couple of minutes away. Ray Harper and his Hilltoppers winning four games in four days in Hot Springs, Arkansas to take that Sun Belt Conference tournament. And there they are, Crook, Price, Gordon, the freshman who leads them in scoring and rebounding, along with Fant and a Cole. Meanwhile, Mississippi State, as Steve said, heavy senior squad. Arrington, though, is a freshman. Burwell, Joyner, Crosby, and Studevan for head coach Sean Woods. 
What is the appetite of this tournament history and its lore? The point guard on the Unforgettables of Kentucky, which lost in that regional final back in 92 for Kentucky against Duke. We visited with their locker room just a moment ago. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine o'clock in the morning. We're in the gym where everybody else is sleeping. This ain't no surprise. This ain't no surprise. Everybody else is making a big deal out of it because we're here and, and the way we got here. But we're the only people that I told you in this locker room, all right, that knew that this was the plan anyway. Sean Woods and his team, they took on anybody who gave them a chance early in the season, including the University of North Carolina. Stevens, Rastatter, and Riley are the officials for game one. 67 games it'll take to determine the 2012 national champion. And it all begins right here. How sweet it is. Let's get it underway. And the tip controlled. Well, for a moment, the Hilltoppers had it, but it ends up in the hands of Terrence Joyner. And here are the Hilltoppers on defense with the Delta Devils in the white uniforms here. We heard Ray Harper tell Tracy his team has to take care of the ball. Mississippi Valley State, a team that's going to trap and press and try to double team, force turnovers. And he shoots a three, too. That's a three point shot by Crosby, who was the conference player of the year. And boy, did they storm through that conference. They had a 17 game win streak. Barry nearly went through the season undefeated to the conference play, lost the last regular season game and then close them out, everybody, in the conference tournament. And Kentucky missing from the corner. That was a Cole who comes off of one of his biggest games. His biggest in his career, a career high 23 in that championship game for Western Kentucky. He was spectacular. He sure was, was Steve. He made all kinds of shots inside, outside. Uh, North North Texas, uh, that's a talented team, too. Tony Mitchell stolen away by Crook. Takes it to the hole, misses the shot off the glass. Follow up, no, and controlled by Studevant. If you always expect some nerves here early in these tournament games, particularly in your first round game. Bill Thompson's had a couple of close range shots. TJ Price has that shot is swatted away by a Cole. Tinga Cole setting up the toppers. Three and a one, and Crook shot will count. Off the goaltend and hit the glass. First two of the tournament. Excellent defense leading to a fast break opportunity. A Cole with the denial, and then Gordon pushes ahead right away, has his head up, and Crook able to fill the lane and finish. This is Burwell, their top assist man. Off the glass for two of his own. And the first points of the game for the Delta Devils. Devin Burwell actually led the entire conference in assists this year. Senior from Philadelphia. Really a crafty player, Jim. Shoot the three. Has change of pace dribble. Not blinding quick, but knows how to get into the paint. This is Tina Cole. Stuck for a moment. Crosby forced him to give it up outside. Price to the corner. Jump shot. Off the mark, that's Fent, a freshman. The rebound, taking it back out. Here's Crook, that's a two, and he buries it. He got the first four of the game for Western Kentucky. He's only averaged six points a game in his last half dozen, Jim, and has shot it poorly. But a good start here for him tonight. What a pass from Fent, too, off the offensive board. You love that when your big man looks right out at you if you're a perimeter shooter, because you know the defense is scrambled. Crook comes out with the rebound, takes it down the floor. Outside, here's Crook. Doubled up and he traveled. Checking in for Western Kentucky, number 41, Vinny Silva. And we've got our first subs of the game. You made the point of it, Steve. Offensive rebound, patience, poise, and nice delivery. And Crook, the beneficiary, and able to knock down a wide open jumper. I like what he did, too, stepping inside that three point line. He's just 24% from the stripe so not a guy who's really proficient from out there so step in make it an easier shot well the guy who just came in to replace him is proficient from that three point line about 15 three point field goals made in the tournament beautiful shot by Burwell 
All right, the two subs coming in for Western Kentucky. We'll see him handling here. First, you've got Khalil McDonald with the ball right now, the senior for Brooklyn, along with Vinny Solo, freshman from Winchester, Kentucky. Khalil has been terrific of late. McDonald forces that one, though, and the Delta Delta is off and running. Here's a three-point shot. No. Off the mark by Arrington. Chased down by Gordon. Out to Gordon from New Jersey. He's a scorer and a rebounder. St. Patrick's High School. Nice looking young player. Drives right into traffic there and a hail ball. And the arrow belongs to Western Kentucky as we reach our first break. Brooke has all four for the Hilltoppers. Burwell all four for the Delta Devils. And President Obama with a special guest sitting to his left. And that is the British Prime Minister David Cameron in the dark shirt there. Probably asking a lot of questions about what's actually going on yep. in the game right now. Well, he'll be hosting his own big event here later in 2012 at the Summer Olympics coming to London. London 2012. Got a foul here on Burwell as the president's explaining what just happened on that last inbounds play. I think we've ever had a, a president who was a bigger basketball fan. I can't recall Obama in my lifetime. President Clinton, of course, was a huge Arkansas fan. He followed him in that 94 championship season to the regionals. And then on, that was in Dallas, and then on to Charlotte, watched him win the championships. Ball stolen away here in Mississippi State. as Terrence Joyner is making a few nifty moves and drew the foul on Fant. Nice job just to get the shoulders by Fant and draw the foul. Joyner, the second Terrence leading scorer on this team. Mississippi Valley State. Guy who can shoot it from the three-point line. And as he showed you there, he has the ability to go off the dribble. Fast. And I think the key with you to guard Mississippi Valley State is about staying in front of your man individually. You know, they're going to go one on one a lot. They really want to get out in transition. And when they don't, the half court execution is not great. So you've got to stay in front of your guy and force them to execute. Excellent point. And I got this terminology from Thad Motter, the head coach at Ohio State guard your yard. Guard your yard. Guard your yard. Yard meaning three feet, yeah, yeah. not your whole yard. <laughs> But it is, it, it reinforces the point you're making, being able to individually keep your guy from beating you easily. Joyner makes one for two. Mississippi State has, Mississippi Valley State has its first lead. Cook gets it back down high to Fenton. Gordon with three on the shot clock. Donald has to take it. Back to the rim. And the rebound chased down by Studdleton. He's really solid. Doesn't do anything very flashy, but does everything solid and very much plays within himself. Well, that play was a little out of control, but got him right back. And the Delta double for jumper is good by Arrington. The freshman from Baltimore who actually lit up North Carolina with 33 points at Chapel Hill early in the season. Fan is fouled at the other end. I believe it's on Crosby. Jim, that North Carolina game you mentioned was the one that Sean Woods talked about yesterday when we visited with him. He said, that's when I knew we had something. Even though we got blown out, we really were able to hang with them for spurts in that game. And we'll talk more about George that brutal non-conference schedule that Mississippi Valley State played. But I think, you know, when you look at some of the clubs they went against, not only Carolina, but Notre Dame, South Carolina, Arkansas, Florida. It got them prepared for the type of athleticism they're going to see in this tournament. There you see the winner of this game will take on the number one overall seed, Kentucky, on Thursday. And the first game of the nighttime session there in Louisville. Fant with one more. 
We'll get another one, I think. And you got a lane will. violation yeah. on Arrington. Mm -hmm. and there's Sean Woods. Imagine if he had the chance. Yeah, if his Delta Devils could win this game, he'd be going against his alma mater. You know, he made a great point yesterday when you asked him, what would you think about coming to Dayton for the first four? He said, I love it because normally a 16 seed has to go right in and play one of the top teams in the country. This gives us a chance to win a game. Yeah, mm -hmm. never the won tournament. a game. The school has never won a game in the tournament. Trying to make history, and that is rejected by Solo as Jorge Cox went up for the dunk. What a play by Vinny Zolo. Now that would be a big thing to get that first win. They've drawn that 16 assignment on the other four trips to the NCAA tournament. And he played a very noteworthy bunch from Duke to Ohio State to Georgetown to UCLA. Right. Royalty in college basketball. One of the things about this Mississippi Valley State team, you look at the stats and the numbers, and they shoot 40% from the floor, low 30s from three, don't really do anything exceptionally well other than speed teams up and spurt on you two or three times during the game, and that's typically how they win. The more chaotic the pace, the more frenetic, that's when they seem to thrive. So keep an eye on that, folks. Mississippi Valley State wants to speed things up and create havoc and make it almost a little bit like a schoolyard game and then be able to thrive in the open court. That is called on Fant as Arrington did a nice job of drawing the charge. That's two on one of the premier players for the Hilltoppers who averages 10 points a game. Good job by Arrington. Excellent job there. He was aware, understood where the ball was, wasn't hugging his man, was defending the ball and drew a charge. to Cox and it's off his hands. So you got the interesting angle. If Mississippi Valley State goes on the win, you got Woods going against Kentucky, but then you got the other matchup. A Hilltopper win here, Western Kentucky against Kentucky in Louisville. <laughs> now, that would draw a little interest too. Oh yeah, pretty good season for the state of Kentucky. Four of the six Division I schools are in the in the bracket with uh, Louisville and yep. our state as well. The Bluegrass State, the Commonwealth, well represented. And Cole comes up short with that shot. Cox saves it. Saves it smartly over to Joyner. Well, that was nice execution, though, by Western Kentucky to get a high-quality shot. Made multiple passes and got it in the paint. Side. He'll take the long jumper. And it's pulled down by Gordon. And a terrific rebounding guard, Jim. Isn't he? He's their top rebounder. He's 6 2. Crook with the pull up jumper. Rims out, and there's Gordon. He had it rejected and taken away by Arrington. Up ahead, and Joyner has the basket. That's the price you pay, though, if your guard goes to the offensive glass. Now your defensive balance is not quite there, and the Delta Devils take advantage. And another turnover as Brooke lost control and threw it over the head of his teammate. There you see Joyner converting. Joyner, who signed, was talking about Arkansas earlier. He originally signed with the Razorbacks out of high school. Did that young man right there who scored the basket for the Delta Devils? The 9 to 5 lead. Defense there from a pole. Mississippi Valley State has gone to their small lineup. Uh, they've, they've taken Stud of off the floor and put in Core J. Cox kind of as a small four. This is when they really like to spread you out and let Crosby go to work down low. But nice defense there negated that move. Here's defense by William Pugh, number one for Mississippi Valley State. The headband defending, seeing his first action. Uh, Cole get up, get up, get up. and the rebound over into the arms of Joyner. Western Kentucky's missed this last seven and Pew dunks it home. Wow. And he had to hold on for protection just to avoid any kind of injury on that one. The momentum of his speed obviously put him in a vulnerable position and he had to get that rim held in order to come down softly. The junior from Greenwood, Mississippi. Look at this swarming defense. This is what Mississippi Valley State likes to do. 
Inside, Snipes banks it home. So a wild Snipes. scramble, and Western Kentucky has its first basket in over six minutes. Well, if they can take care of the ball, there will be opportunities like that. There's a shot long and tapped out to Zoho. That was for Jay Cox, who attempted the jumper. He's a first team all swack player. He only started one game this year. To the corner, Zoho with a three, and it's good. And the Hilltoppers are within one. He's a good looking freshman. This is a team that is dominated by freshmen. Five of the top seven players, in fact. So I think this is a club you could see in the tournament, possibly in the coming years. And Zolo, a nice player, can shoot it. Excellent passer for a big man as well. So that's going to be a foul on Gordon as the teams head to the benches. Q comes in off the bench with an electrifying highlight in the tournament. Four presented by Northwestern Mutual, Jim Nance, Steve Kerr, and Clark Kellogg here in Dayton, Ohio. We're going to show you penetrating and kicking for a three. This is Khalil McDonald. Going to get in the lane, and what we want to do, freeze it here, because he's going to get right in here, and he's got a shooter right out there in the corner, Vinny Zolo. But the penetration draws defenders. Nice pass, and then there's Zolo spraying the wide open three. But that's excellent basketball. He's under control, jump stop, simple pass, right on time and on target. Now, partner, you can't tell us straight right over the president, okay? <laughs> you can't do hey, that. Hey, now, we you're talking to him at halftime. <laughs> you can apologize then. <laughs> you go back and look at it. It would be you, it would be you to notice something like that. Yeah. And the shot is blocked as Crosby almost gets it back on the floor. As right back into the hands of Mississippi Valley State. Up ahead for two, it's Arrington. I'll tell you what, Western Kentucky is going to have to adjust to this speed and the defense that they're seeing. That's six turnovers yep. now. McDonald with a couple of them. And Jamal Crook ready to check in. And he's he's the starting, on the line. He's the starting point guard guy, so he's going to be reinserted. Play the official NCAA.com March Madness bracket challenge. The game closes at halftime. So log on to NCAA.com right now to get your picks in. There's still time. 7 turnovers so far by the Hilltoppers. Start of it. Side, nice move. And the shot goes out of bounds, goes to Western Kentucky. Checking in for Western Kentucky. And the Hilltoppers. Akamane comes in. Okara Akamane from Miami, a sophomore. You were talking about how young this team is. Both of you were. Western Kentucky out of the 300 plus Division I programs in college basketball, the sixth youngest in the nation. Here they are with that streak, earning their way to the tournament. A Cole is stuffed. And then off the floor, the tip, no. And I foul calls against Brent Arrington of the Delta Devils. Sean Woods is furious with his team for not boxing out, but this is a pretty small lineup on the floor. He's got... Uh, Corey J. Cox playing the four, as we talked about, and it, it helps speed-wise to really get them into their pressing and trapping. But again, if you can get to the rim, if you can take care of the ball, there are going to be opportunities for scores and offensive putbacks. What a job done by Sean Woods. Again, part of that Kentucky lore. The unforgettables with Pelfrey, Feldhouse, Richie Farmer that nearly pulled off that 92 regional final. It was Woods who hit the shot with 2.1 seconds to go over Leitner. The shot before the shot. In his fourth year now here on the bench for Mississippi Valley State and taking them to the tournament. He really had to completely rebuild the program and he's done a masterful job of it. Here's a three pointer and a rebound into the hands of Western Kentucky. Nice outlet pass to McDonald. McDonald is going to be called for the charge. Ooh, tough call. Yep. 
Looked like Burwell slid over into him. And I thought McDonald had a pass to the left wing, elected to go himself, and that gave Burwell time to size him up and anticipate his drive. But I agree with you, Steve. It appeared as though Burwell was not quite in legal guarding position there. Stud event. Short with the left handed shot into the hands of a Cole. Rice gets it across. Brooke scored the first two baskets of the game. Well, one of the reasons they were able to win the Sun Belt Conference Championship is Cole gets to the rim and scores. But they started knocking down shots. McDonald, in particular, made 13 threes in four games. I think they're going to have to make some threes here tonight to loosen up this defense of Mississippi Valley State. Another thing they did is they kept coming from behind in every one of these games. That's right. Double digits they on sure many did. occasions. And a rebound out of the air by Cole. But Cole, and he is fouled. Now, they did really find a way to win, didn't they? That they sure did. To find it. And part of it was the good half-court defense and the three-point shot-making that you talked about, Steve. There's the game's only three, and the game is tied in the first half. You're suffering from a little Triskaidekaphobia. Beware here on March 13th. 13-13, 13, 13, Jim Nance. I didn't know if you were going to get that out. <laughs> Right in here, my <laughs> you, you knew that word all along, right? Of you didn't have to look it up or anything. Mark Kellogg, uh, how about this game so far? Well, neither team is a really good shooting team, and we're seeing that combining 11 of 37 from the floor, only one of seven from the three-point line. But I figured it would be competitive because both of these teams play so hard and persist in doing what they want to do. Western Kentucky wants to play in the half court. Mississippi Valley State wants to try to speed you up and get in transition and put together a couple of game-changing spurts. There's Crook along with the shot. Right into the hands of Burwell. And the point for the Delta Devils. Swings it around. Snappy passing to the corner. Almost set up the three. And that's the rebound down low by Crosby. That's a good look at the three. The, the floor was spaced nicely. And a good look for Joyner, who's about 39% from behind the arc. And that's 38 really, percent actually. Yeah, that's their best offense. You know, take a, a missed shot or a steal, get out in transition and move the ball for an open look. And if I'm Western Kentucky, I feel pretty good right now. Eight turnovers already. We couldn't play any worse. Transition defense has been bad, and here we are tied. So they've got to just settle down and get into their game. Well, not having George Fant on the floor really limits some of what Western Kentucky wants to do mm. in the half court. He's been out for a while with the two fouls. Here's the three point shot dips down and out. That was Joyner who nearly knocked it down from three point territory. Then a foul call against Arrington. That will be his second. Mississippi Valley State now 0 for 6 from three. You know, Jim, they make about eight a game on average on 23 attempts. So about 33 percent they shoot from the three point line. And again, it's not necessarily the percentage that they make but it's the volume that they take and can they put together a couple in a frenetic pace to create some distance between themselves and the opponent Sean Woods he was an assistant for a while at uh, High Point down in North Carolina Texas A&M Corpus Christi TCU going against Ray Harper who came home very loyal to his family to his state he had many opportunities has won some big championships inside a common is able to draw the foul after he had just been whistled for one at the other end it's easy to see where Sean Woods was influenced in his coaching career. And it really came from his playing days yeah. in Kentucky. That's I mean, right. Rick Pitino, remember those clubs, especially back then, would trap all over the floor, and they would they'd try to speed you up. Mm -hmm. They'd jump pick and rolls and trap, and they'd also, you know, funnel players in and out. So Sean has taken that philosophy and brought it here. I mean, he's really trying to speed the game up and playing a, a Rick Pitino style. And then an assistant, as I mentioned, at Texas A&M, Corpus Christi to Ronnie Arrow and then to Neil Darty, a uh, Roy Williams disciple at TCU. So he's been around some some big ones. 
Seven straight misses from the floor. It ends right there as Pugh hits the outside shot. And it's a two. Pugh has come out and played with some confidence here. He's looking for his shot, looking to get out in transition. Hello, the pass is stolen. Hanchkovic just comes into the game and snaps it up ahead to Joyner. Pugh makes the move, dishes down low, and Solo with the contact. And actually, I think it's a jump call. Ball. They call it a jump ball. Yeah. So, so Zolo able to tie him up, but the arrow will stay at this end. Well, I like Zolo's activity. I mean, he knocked down the three earlier, and he's in the middle of a lot of things inside. From Serbia, the freshman. Must be fouled in the act of shooting. I think this is a guy that Mississippi Valley State would like to see get going. He's been in double digits in 14 of his last 15. Really a powerful player down low and also has a nice shooting touch. He can take you out to the three-point mm -hmm. line. Well, he did something this season. Talking about yes, making threes. This young man at the line, Paul Crosby, a senior from Lansing, Michigan. Looked like in the late stages of his high school career, he might be playing at Michigan State. Well, he ended up landing here at uh, Itabina, Mississippi, Mississippi Valley State. In back-to-back -back home games, February 18th, February 20th, he hit game-winning threes in the last second to beat Prairie View one game, Texas Southern in the next. <laughs> Not a bad week. Not a bad week. The hero at home back to back. Zolo short. That's Crosby with the rebound. But you're right, Clark. They've got to get him going. He's the key to this club because when he can go inside and score a little bit, the team gains confidence and they like to play off of him. That's why they're continuing to pound it into him to try to get him into a groove. On the floor, it's picked up by Price, taken off. And it's going to be a block call against Mississippi Valley State. Well, he was determined to take that all the way to the hole. Yeah, he made up his mind quite a, right away. He gets the orange and coming right at us. Draws the second foul on Pugh. Yeah, Pugh stepped in there clearly. Slid into Price there. Here's a freshman now from Slidell, Louisiana. Just across Lake Pontchartrain from the Final Four city of New Orleans. Coming up, AT&T at the half, and at halftime, again, Clark will talk live with President Obama and British Prime Minister David Cameron. All coming up on AT&T at the half is our partners over here still writing down a few questions. He's got he's got the <laughs> list pared down to his top well, you 50. Got, you guys help me pare it down. I've That's got it. some input and I'll try to see if I can get your questions in front of the president. What an incredible experience for you. A terrific honor talk and to opportunity. My no partner's done about it. He's got a nice relationship with the president. He's interviewed him the last two years during the, the NCAAs. A couple years. Had an opportunity. Vern Lundquist and I he joined us at the table during a Georgetown Duke game back in January of 2010. Then the infamous POTUS game that the president and I had a couple of years ago. As a matter of fact, one of the questions might be, is there a rematch in store <laughs> <Yeah>. somewhere <laughs> down the line? <laughs> that came right down to the wire, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Your it own did. version of horse. Yes, that's right. P-O-T-U-S, -T -T President right. of the United States. <laughs> I jumped out to an early lead. Potus. The president got his wind, his legs, and his mojo, <laughs> and I couldn't stop the momentum. Just to beat the shot clock. Got the rim, too, and a nice job by Burwell. Yeah, that was Joyner alertly putting it up, and mm -hmm. it grazed the rim to prevent the shot clock violation, and it stays at this end. So if you're playing horse or POTUS, as you call it, against the president, at any point do you think, I, I, maybe I should let him win? I didn't think that, actually, but I was off to such a good start <laughs> that the, I felt like maybe I should 
alter things maybe, maybe, just a maybe tad. keep it close yeah and then when that happens sometimes you can't <laughs> get the momentum back steve <laughs> Tell you what, both of these teams, guys, have not shot it well, but you certainly don't lack for energy and effort and intensity out here. I mean, both of these teams are getting after it. Oh, well, oh, man, did that have some ink time. Oh, With the left. <laughs> <laughs> that would work in POTUS. <laughs> yes. That would be a classic <laughs> POTUS shot there. Coming out with it is Burwell. And reaching it from behind. To knock it out, it'll come back to Mississippi Valley State. Out of the break. 326 to go in the half. And this is what we were talking about. Clark gets out to the early lead. Oh, oh. President comes back. <laughs> we'll hear from him at halftime. Coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament is sponsored by Allstate. AT&T. And by Direct TV. We're back here in Dayton, Ohio. The first four, Western Kentucky and Mississippi Valley State. Along with Clark Kellogg and Steve Kirk, Jim Nance. Here courtside, there is Coach Ray Harper. He's won four national championships, Coach Harper. Two in Division II at Kentucky Wesleyan, up the road from Bowling Green, the side of uh, Western Kentucky University, up in Owensboro, and two at Oklahoma City. NAIA titles, and that's a foul call against Mississippi Valley State. It's called on Joyner his first. Let's take a look the restricted area arc and clearly the defender was outside of that arc able to draw the foul. Jim you talked about coach Harper and taking over at midseason. There's a reason these players immediately responded to him. And it's because of that experience. They know his history of coaching really good basketball teams. Hey, he's a winner. He's, yeah. he's got over 400 games on the sideline as a head coach with over 80% win percentage. Up ahead. And a foul call as Cox went up for the shot. Maybe he was going to try to dunk it, but he had his arms taken away. Foul call on Price's first. This is the third time we've seen this uh, transition. And nothing back defensively for Western Kentucky. And that's what happens when you penetrate and you send everybody to the offensive glass. You're really vulnerable. And I'm sure Harper's going to talk to his guys about that at halftime. And there is Cox getting on the board with his first point. He averages 11 a game. And again, he comes off the bench and he still made first team all Southwestern Athletic Conference. And he was actually MVP of the SWAT tournament. He had 40 points and 27 rebounds in the three games there. A perfect guy to have at the front of your press. And you see him there right on the ball now. Long arms, bouncy, covers a ton of ground. And as soon as the ball is entered, he'll more than likely trap on the ball. And here, here he goes. Is. Yeah. That was the second free throw. There was a lane violation on the Delta Devils. Western Kentucky now has gone almost six minutes without a basket. Still only down by four, Jim. But Mississippi Valley State not able to pull away. And Fant on the bench with those two fouls. And Gordon, trap here. Gordon, their leading scorer, has not That's five seconds. put up a single point. He had an What's the call? Whistle. I don't think there was a call, but I thought five seconds. He was hemmed in pretty good. They're going to confer here. It felt like five seconds. It sure did. <laughs> it really felt really like did. 15 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what they do. Any any time you're in a vulnerable spot on the floor, mm -hmm. on the sideline, like McDonald is there, they're going to come after you. And they're going to trap you, and they're long-armed and athletic. And then the, the three guys on the weak side, they're going to they're play a zone and go for a steal. 
Look at Sean Woods right in the middle of that. This was told by one of the officials, an inadvertent whistle. Yeah, he was appealing. You saw him putting up the five right, fingers. Right, exactly. He wanted that five count. Well, sometimes the clock in our heads moves a little faster than the official count. <laughs> by the way, they do not, of course, reset the shot clock, so it's at five. Crook drives in, lost the handle, but it goes off the fingertips of Cox. It was not a change of possession, so two seconds to get off a shot here for the Hilltoppers. And there's the shot. And that prevents the breakaway opportunity because of the violation. I'd like to see that change. If there's going to say the same yeah, thing. If there's <laughs> clear possession yes. and it's simultaneous with the clock going expiring yeah. and the possession being retained, yeah. let's play basketball. Yeah. And I know the reason they've he hesitated to make that change is because there's a little gray area. What if a guy catches it and then the ball's knocked right. away? But you're penalizing the defense right. really That's by stopping issue. the game. Yeah. Inside of two minutes to go in the first half. 19 to 15. Mississippi Valley State. Burwell. And he draws the foul on Western Kentucky. I really like the way this little guy handles his business out there. He's not very big. Again, not super quick, but crafty. And actually, he and Sean Woods butted heads early in his career. And this young man just continued to persist and get better and is really their most indispensable player now. That foul was on Crook. It'll be a one and one here for Burwell. You know, Sean Woods said a couple of years ago, I was trying to run him out of town because yeah. he kept turning the ball over. Right. Now I can't do without him. That's yeah, exactly they right. said it was in the act of shooting, so he's going to get another one. Really glad to see the success for Sean Woods. He's worked extremely hard each year. This team has gotten a little bit better in the win column, culminating with this trip to the tournament. Right, promising young coach. And this is their year, you know, five out of the top seven players are seniors. This is what they've been gunning for. And we heard a little bit of that in the pregame talk. Yes, in the locker room. We talked about all the work they've put in over the years, and it's paid off. Crook off the glass. A coal right back nice. with it. Ting a coal. He played one year of basketball at Oklahoma State before transferring out. Into the paint. Instead of that, blocked by a Cole with that end. And it's Crook in the corner. He might need some help. Maybe he double take the pass with two guys on him. He can create a mismatch or a numbers advantage. Donald. That pass right into the hands of Mississippi Valley State. Well, I think Western Kentucky dribbled themselves out of opportunities yeah. there, Steve. Yeah, no question. Throw the ball ahead. Here's Crosby. Missing on the three, and that is going to be a foul call on Cox. They're now 0 for 8 from 3, but they lead by 3. The Delta Devils, and again, coming up next on this floor, a matchup of 14 seeds. The last two in, Iona and BYU. Great matchup. It really is. I mean, both teams amongst the nation's leaders in points per game. Iona actually number one in scoring in the country. And BYU not very far behind. Both teams love to push it, have excellent talent and shot makers. If they play to their level, we could be mm -hmm. in for some kind of treat in mm -hmm. the second matchup. Nicole hits the Front end of the one and one. With 49 seconds to go. Pretty good stat line for a cold stuffing that stat sheet. Points, rebounds, and blocks in a one point game now. Ball stripped out, last touched. Western Kentucky, 15 on the shot clock, 29 seconds to go in the half. And Sean Woods wants to bring his team to the bench. His team is leading by one, closing seconds, first half at Dayton. 
Welcome back to the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual here on True TV. Ball belongs to Mississippi Valley State. 29 seconds to go in the half. And the winner of this one advancing to the second round to face Kentucky on Thursday down in Louisville. We got 10 on the shot clock. And that's Burwell. And they've got their first three of the night. Kevin Burwell, and he was way out there in a timeout called by the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky went to a zone. That was the first time we've seen that, and Burwell takes advantage. Western Kentucky trying to set up a last shot here of the half. 16 seconds to go. There's Coach Harper. Plenty of time here now. You've got to take care of the ball. That's been a problem for Western Kentucky throughout this half. I would expect the Delta Devils to continue to apply the heat. Don't just concede. Keep the heat on and see if you can turn them over again. Western Kentucky, on the other hand, has to get it in and then advance the ball with the pass. Don't try to dribble through this pressure. They back off now, so you bring it up and run your set. Maybe they can get Derek Gordon a shot here before the half. They're going to score. Going here he is. He has not hit a shot so far in this game. Three to go, and there's Gordon. Gordon with the three, no, and a rebound by Cox. And we reach halftime in Dayton with Mississippi Valley State trying to get its first ever win in the NCAA tournament. Leading at halftime, 23 to 19. Burwell with 10 points, including that three, leading all scores. And we'll continue here on True TV in just a moment. Mississippi Valley State leading as we're about to embark on that second half. I think Clark did a great job out there. And how do you see the uh, second half coming up here, Steve Kerr? Well, I think the key for Western Kentucky, they've got to get Fant now into the game. He only played five minutes uh, with the two fouls. And can he get into the groove? He's their key guy. I think they're lucky only to be down four because they couldn't have played any worse to this point. All right, let's take a look at some of the first half numbers. The percentages are very low here. 25% from the field for Western Kentucky. 30% Mississippi Valley State. And you see the Hilltoppers also turned it over 13 times. Clark Kellogg, well done there. Thank partner. you, partner. Thank nice you very job. much. What a treat. Very what a treat. smooth. Well, I learned and sit next to one of the best. <laughs> well, let's go over to Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks, Jim. You guys are talking about the Hilltoppers and their 13 turnovers. Well, I spoke with Ray Harper. He said this young team was just lost in the moment. They panicked a bit. He expects them to pick it up in the second half. As for Sean Woods, he said he was extremely happy with his team's defensive pressure. He's not worried about the shots falling. If they keep that pressure up, the shots will come, guys. Okay, this is something, again, we talked about earlier. Western Kentucky has been putting itself in this position during this late season win streak coming from behind and finding a way to turn things around in the second half. Well, they won six in a row to end the season, trailed in all six. And that's what Ray Harper has talked about is just the, the poise and the resilience of his team during this recent stretch. And they're going to need it because they did not look poised at all. As Tracy said, I mean, they were they were out of whack. And maybe it was just the, the moment. Maybe they can settle down now. On the floor, and it's another turnover, the 14th of the game. And a tie up, and this arrow is going to go to Mississippi Valley State. Look, I thought the president had it right about these players being nervous, you know. He big stage here. He was very much on top of it. That's exactly part of what we saw in that first half. And the prime minister seemed to be grasping things in a hurry mm -hmm. this first ever basketball game so he's picking the Buckeyes huh? well he's head to the final four yeah he's, I don't think his bracket has been revealed yet but he has filled it out I understand mm -hmm. I think we'll see it at some point tomorrow or there's another three by Burwell 
And he's got half the points for the Delta Devils. Hit that three right before the half. And hits another one here in the first minute of the second stanza. Largest lead of the game for either side. It's at seven. Cook slides inside. Well defended. A pole has it taken away in the big bodies of Mississippi Valley State defending there. Turnovers Crosby coming away with it. Turnovers on the first two possessions. Clark Hughes talked about something in the first half. A Cole with a nice block there, but too much dribbling for Western Kentucky. Here's a shot inside, and for the first time tonight, Gordon is on the board. That was the effective use of the dribble there as Gordon able to get all the way to the rim. I think it's important that Western Kentucky attack for scores, but they've got to do it in a smart fashion. And it has to start with squeezing the orange. You've got to take care of the ball. Arrington comes back down with it, had it stripped for a moment. Shot clock at 10. Burwell was aware of it. He looked up. Floor general for the Delta Devils. Takes it down to the baseline, gets it away in time, and he hits another one. And he looks over at the president and says, how did you like that? <laughs> Little fella spraying it from deep. I guess you only have one shot at that in your life, right? Oh, you we'll got a chance to that. stare at the president. Might as well. Brooke tapped up and in. Trying to find a little offensive rhythm now here, guys. Back to back to back hoops. I think that's Basketball four consecutive, isn't it? It is. And a call really has been the, the lone bright spot for the Hilltoppers. It's Arrington. And the rebound bouncing over into the hands of Studevant. Burwell trying to back up that three, and he draws the foul. It's going to be on Western Kentucky. Going to be called against Price. His second. You're going to take a look at Kevin Burwell knocking down this three and then going eye contact for President Obama. Kevin Burwell up along and shooting two. That clip will be played back <laughs> in the family forever. For generations. That's right. As Burwell's at the line now. The senior from Philadelphia. He's had some type of an efficient game thus far, Kevin Burwell. I'm not sure you want to stare at the president too long. No, in he, this did, he, did it, he did it. He was right within the shot. I'm just saying, a lot, a lot of Secret Service guys here. <laughs> and by the way, a lot of NCA people here. I can't tell the difference. Who, who's NCA? Who's, C, who's CIA? Who's Secret Service? They all look alike. They got the same pins on. Yeah. That's what you were saying. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be blending in. <laughs> And Burwell hits both. He's got the last 11 points for Mississippi Valley State. And the lead is eight. And that's going to be a foul call against Crosby. His second. I'd like to see Western Kentucky set up some pressure release type plays, some backdoor action where they can use Mississippi Valley State's defensive pressure against them. In order to do that, Steve, you know you got to take care of the ball. Yeah. I and mean, you've got to be strong with the ball and good with it. Otherwise, whatever you run, I understand what you're saying, but Western Kentucky has to be a lot better handling the ball against the pressure. Yeah. Well, there they had it knocked loose initially. Out of the hands of Fant, who set most of that first half. Sure did. He only played five minutes, Jim. With the two fouls. He's an integral part of this team for Western Kentucky. He number sure 44. Is. Closing in over here on Crosby's three. Joyner kicks it back out high. Back over to Joyner on the wing for a three. They got two good looks at it there. Rice racing up the floor, lobbing it down low. A pull back out to Price for the three. It's short. Exit pass out to Burwell. To the corner. Joiner inside, and that's a clean block. A call. Wow, throws it up off the glass for two. 
this pace has certainly freshened, hasn't it? I mean, these guys are getting up and down and starting to put the ball in the basket a little better. And that is Arrington. And he is fouled there by Price. Number three. One more look at Burwell's big moment. Hits the three. And says, how did you like that? The first four presented by Northwestern Mutual continues tomorrow on True TV with Lamar and Vermont, followed by California and South Florida. The night starts at 6 p.m. with the Infinity NCAA tip-off show. Vermont and Lamar, coached by Pat Knight, will be on this floor tomorrow. Shooting two. And then California out of the Pac-12. Second team in, along with the Colorado Buffaloes who won that conference tournament, and South Florida out of the Big East. As Harrington will shoot one more, a little bit more, if you will, about that game he had at Chapel Hill, this young man at the line right here, a freshman from Baltimore. His 33 went against Carolina. His next highest output of the season was 17. His 33 against, at the time, number one North Carolina, the most scored by any player against the number one ranked team all season in college basketball. And here come the Delta Doubles again. Boy, good defensive job that time to him up. Price. Taking it in, and the basket will count. He did this once in the first half with determination. Barreling down the floor. Jim, that was beautifully done. Excellent body control coming right at you, folks. Slides a bit away from the defender and then goes right through him. Excellent concentration. Well done by T.J. Price. And it's a three-point play. Much needed as the Hilltoppers have come from eight down to three. At some point, I think Mississippi Valley State has to get Paul Crosby going. He's just not found his rhythm thus far tonight. Nor has Joyner really. Well, for the most part. And that's a traveling call. Seventh turnover on Mississippi Valley. How about that schedule you talked about, Steve? Earlier in the game, Mississippi hitting the road so early in the season. Second hardest non-conference schedule in the nation. Well, you look at the graphic, at the, the bottom part of that graphic, made almost $800,000 from guarantees from those games, and that's critical. This is an athletic department that has a budget of $4 million. Compare that to University of Wisconsin, $88 million. So you get an idea of what some of these SWAT teams have to go through. So they, a lot of them really load up on the, the big time teams, helps them run their operation. But to come back from one and 11, which is where they were, pretty impressive to be here now. And it prepared them for conference play as they roll through at 17 and one in the regular season. Boy, they've had some good looks here. Foul call on Mississippi Valley State. It is called on Crosby, his third. Well, that stretch included, I mean, it was a big game collection of juggernauts at Notre Dame, at DePaul, at North Carolina, at South Carolina, where they actually were up 10 late in that game, but lost on the road. At Arkansas, at Northwestern, at Ole Miss, Ole, at Florida, at Wisconsin. I mean, it's pretty amazing. List as Pugh hits a three like he did earlier. Well, it was a first half slam dunk and a two point jumper. And that one was a three. That was a big one, too, because the momentum was starting to shift. That's right. And Sean Woods, even though Crosby has the three fouls, Steve, has not moved to take him out of the game. Yeah. You and I were talking during halftime about how we don't automatically think a player with two fouls or even a third in the second half, two fouls in the first half, to immediately be taken out. Sean Woods going to trust his senior to be able to play with three fouls here. Well, it's already a very thin front line for yeah. Mississippi Valley State. They really only have two big guys, you know, with Crosby and Studova. So 
I think it's the right call for Sean Woods, but Paul Crosby's going to have to be very careful out there. Mm -hmm. the Mississippi Valley State again. This is a fifth trip to the NCAA tournament. Western Kentucky is no stranger. This is their 41st all-time NCAA tournament game, and they were in the tournament in 08, made it to the Sweet 16. In 2009, they won a game as well. They've won 18 games in NCAA tournament history, including a Final Four back in 1971. They are not strangers to the tournament. And this is going to be a traveling call on Ting Cole. Cole just doesn't have the strength right now to get deep position, and he can be bumped off his spot fairly easily. And that time got muscled into a walk. Crosby. Nice move, and he finishes it off. His first field goal of the game, Crosby with three points. Jim, he averages 13 a game. Yep. Again, the conference player of the year. This be moved by Gordon, and the pass deflected to the corner. Here's an open shot. McDonald. Fant with the rebound. Fant loses it going up. And Mississippi Valley State has Joyner in there battling. Plenty of hand fighting and slapping going on in there. Call the foul on Gordon. Yeah. Well, the struggles of McDonald, Gordon, and Fant. I mean, these were the three key guys in that Sun Belt Conference tournament run. Mm -hmm. None of them really have gotten it going here. Exactly right, Steve. You mentioned it in the first half, McDonald made 13 of 25 threes oh. in the conference tournament. There is Gordon with the rebound. Well, he has a terrific knack for going after the ball. Excellent timing. Here's Fant. They need to get him going. Sets up Zolo at three. And he's got his second one of the game. Zolo, three point basket. Down to the corner, Joyner short with the shot. Rebound tapped out to McDonald. Zips it middle, and Gordon lost the handle. Gets it back, and he's fouled. Fouled by Pugh. It'll be two shots at the line. Third foul on Pugh. I'll tell you what, it hasn't been a very productive night for Gordon scoring the ball, but you like this guy's stick to itiveness as we look at him getting to the. Actually, that Zolo knocking down the triple on the last possession. Derek Gordon at the line, the freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey, out of St. Patrick's High School, where he played with Kyrie Irving on that team, and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, who we would like to meet up with in the next round. One of the stars of the Kentucky Wildcats. You can watch every 2012 March Madness game live on your computer, iPad, iPhone, or select Android phones with NCAA March Madness Live. Visit NCAA.com slash March Madness for more information. Yeah, so Gordon comes out of a pretty impressive program back in New Jersey. Top 100 recruit coming Com out. Committed early as a sophomore. If he hadn't, I think he might have had plenty of more offers from some Big East school. Crosby again. That's the second power move he's made in the last few minutes. Zolo was trying to draw a foul and a good job by the officials to play on there. McDonald shot short, tapped up over the cylinder, over the backboard. It'll go to Mississippi Valley State out of the break. So Crosby has powered his way a couple of times, and the Delta Devils are up by six. Welcome back to the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual. Here on True TV, along with Steve Kerr, Clark Kellogg, and Tracy Wolfson. Jim Nance here courtside in Dayton, Ohio. Is such a popular place to get the tournament launched. And they will do so again next year. In fact, they'll have second and third round games here at the University of Dayton Arena. It's a beautiful arena. It sure is. Got a good feel to it, too. Mm -hmm. Old school basketball, Jim. Yeah, it really is a great venue from that standpoint. Intimate. 
A lot of history here. Major history. Yep. You know, this town is so into it that on Sunday night during the selection show, downtown on Fifth Street, down in the what's called the Oregon area, 15,000 people. Oh, it got oh. quite a highlight there. They <laughs> set it up to Court J. Cox. Oh, man. 15,000 showed up to watch the selection show. The steal here to find out who all was going to be coming to their town, and it's going to stay with Mississippi Valley. Look at Burwell set up Cox. Break out the trampoline. Go upstairs, young fella. <laughs> Woo hoo. Cordy. Tying, tying their largest lead. Harrington with a three, and it's long. That's Fant with the rebound. Fant trying to make the move. He's had a quiet night. And on the floor, Zolo saves it, then throws it too high. And another turnover by the Hilltoppers. Their 20th of the game. Here's the tournament summary. Nine Big East teams make the tournament field, most of any conference. South Dakota State, Norfolk State, earning first ever bids. And of course, the big news out of Syracuse today that Mello's out for the tournament, ineligible. Devastating blow there, Jim. He means so much to what they do, anchoring that back line of the zone defense, and really it improved offensively as well. Syracuse is going to have to adjust on the fly. And that was Pew with the basket driving to the hole. He's really given them a boost off the bench. Largest lead of the night, double digits for the first time. Watch this play right here and what it sets up. Pew with nine off the bench. And then the timeout called by Western Kentucky after the toppers called, uh, commit another turnover. Look how fired up the coach <laughs> is. <laughs> well, you love to see that intensity. Runs into Chris Rastatter, one of the officials. Maybe this is Western Kentucky's comfort zone, getting down double digits yeah, in the yeah. second half. The same thing, Jim. I saw him come back from 13 down at about this same time in the championship game of the Sun Belt. And they did it by knocking down threes. McDonald has yet to get a look. That's a great look for Price that's just short. Couldn't ask for a better shot. And a nice push ahead by Burwell. And that's something we haven't seen Western Kentucky do, Steve, is mm -hmm. push the ball ahead with the pass. Yeah. They've tried to do it a little more off the dribble. And three, Khalil Mississippi Valley State is the, the quicker team, the more athletic team, and they've taken Williams advantage of every possible opportunity that they've had in the open court. And Western Kentucky has been a, been a grind just trying to find anything. That last possession may have been their, their best and most efficient it was one of them. offensive Kentucky possession all game. You now with 10 points critics are calling it the funniest most ridiculous show in years don't miss the return of true tv's daring new comedy impractical impractical jokers thursday march 29th 10 p.m the foul was on mcdonald his second and now pew young man having some kind of night off the bench yes, he is he's got 12 and makes the margin 12. joiner checks in for the shooter well, it's so valuable to have a guy who can come off the bench and give you major production in limited time. As Cole gets it pushed ahead, and there's Price going one on three. And lucky to get the ball back. Western Kentucky trying to put it into an 8 nothing run. But everything is contested. Every pass, every trip down the floor. Well, the point Steve made about the quickness and athleticism advantage that Mississippi Valley State has, and here's another example of it. Knox over to Joyner. And that hit the back of the backboard. It's going the other way. It's got to feel like for Western Kentucky that Mississippi Valley State must feel like they have six players on the floor. 
They're all over the place. Which is part of the story. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The hilltop of season. And they lost the game to Louisiana Lafayette when they found out that there had been six on the floor for the opposition at the end of the game for the winner. That would actually mark the final game of Ken McDonald's reign as the head coach. McDonald had taken them to the tournament, had success, but the program was drifting. And then that bizarre finish happened against Louisiana Lafayette early in January. Ray Harper, his assistant, got the job on an interim basis. And then February the 19th, they anointed him the full-time coach, a dream come true. And they haven't lost since. But in trouble here with nine minutes to play. Make it 14 as Crosby dunks it down. That was well done. Four out, one in. And the big fella using that size advantage over a call to get really good position inside and a great post feed. Another sloppy moment up ahead. Joyner trying to save it. Almost lands in the president's lap. As that ball then saved and a foul committed on Western Kentucky. And President Obama and Prime Minister Cameron enjoying the spirited play of the Delta Foul Devils. Foul on Crook, his second. Puts Arrington at the line. Brent Arrington at the line, shooting two. Hilltoppers better be careful. It's starting to get away from him. 8.40 to go. In for Western Kentucky. As McDonald returns to the floor. And it's not just the score, it's the manner with which it's happened. I mean, well said. How many, how many positive half-court sets and, and instances of good execution have we actually seen from them? Maybe one or two. How many? The Kamene also comes back out. Missed the chance to get the lead to 16. There's the jumper off the rim. And it's going to stay at this end of the floor. That's a good early offensive look there. It just doesn't go down for Crook. McDonald with a three. And that's Crook down low. Waits, waits. Tapped out to Arrington. Failing to convert inside. And that's Fant committing the foul. His fourth. Fant wearing that number 44 that at one time belonged to his cousin. Jim McDaniels, one of the biggest stars in Hilltopper history, took that 71 team to the Final Four. Clem Haskins, and their cousins, Fant and Jim McDaniels. McDaniels is here tonight. Fant's going to come out with the four fouls. And there's Jim McDaniels. Brought the number kind of out of retirement. They don't really retire the number. They retire the uniform. But they did go back and Jim McDaniel said with his blessings he'd love to have his cousin wear it. And he's honored it this season with 10 points and six rebounds a game as a freshman. He sure has Jim. And he's going to sit now because he has the four fouls. But you saw him showing some emotion out there before he went to the bench. Has leadership qualities even though he's a freshman in part because he worked so hard. And he's been so consistent in his performance. The last 11 points have gone to Mississippi Valley State. Arrington loses it on the way up, but draws the foul. Well, you can see the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers getting frustrated now. They just can't find anything good. Or not, they can't make anything good happen. Turning the ball over, not making the few open shots they get. And the frustration is starting to mount. Third foul on. Khalil McDonald. So Arrington gets a couple. You can't talk about Mississippi Valley State without talking about their most TJ famous Rice alum, the most Western famous student Kentucky athlete. That would be Jerry run. Rice, who teamed up with Willie Totten, the quarterback, back in the mid 80s. Willie, the satellite Totten, and then went on to have one of the biggest careers in the history of pro football with the 49ers. And he was a product of the Mississippi Valley State system. If I recall correctly, those football teams were scoring a lot more points than what the basketball team has scored here tonight. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Missed free throw that could have increased it to 17. Up ahead, got the numbers three on two. Zolo has hit a couple so far, not this one. Gordon 
He'll go to the line. Tell you what, this kid just really works, Jim. I'm impressed with his effort. Back in Dayton, Mississippi Valley State up 15, and it's been the play of Kevin Burwell offensively that has really opened up this game for the Delta Devils. A couple of left-handed floaters. How about that deep fadeaway three with the shot clock winding down? And they have taken over this game, guys. Look at the turnovers. It really should be about 25. They've missed some free throws. They've missed a couple lay-ins. But it has been total dominance defensively. And they've held Western Kentucky to 24% from the field. 7.46 to play here. 15-point margin. We've been talking about the comeback right. specialist. Is there still enough time? I don't think so, partner, unless they make some threes and take better care. They've got to knock down some threes. I mean, that'll give them a little bit of positive feeling because right now they've just been a bit frustrated because they haven't seen the ball go in the basket. Derek Gordon will get one more. Well, I've been impressed with this young man. He's not shot it well, not scored at his average, but boy, he's been persistent. He's been on that glass, and he's only a freshman, so you can see that he'll have a chance with work to become a really impactful player. Full court pressure now by the Hilltoppers. They just ended the 11 point run. Rob, and another dunk for Cox. That was a pretty good play by Crosby, wasn't great it? Great play, great wasn't pass. Yeah. Nice pass. Wow. Gordon backing up, missing the baseliner. And it's Pew. Ball on the floor. Price picks it up. Gordon put back. No. Tip. No. That's three tries down inside. It stays with Western Kentucky. Excellent execution of the two on one here. The pass thrown over the defense. And Crosby puts it right up there for Core J. Cox. And we've already seen him elevate. Just get it in the neighborhood. Core J will do the rest. Hilltoppers have missed 15 of their last 16 from the field. Double up on a Cole. Gordon kicks it out. McDonald. They've had five tries on this trip, and it finally decides to drop. Another rebound for Gordon. That's 11 on the night. He is relentless He's attacking really that glass. The problem, though, is he keeps getting sucked into that paint area, and that's one of the reasons we've seen so many runouts for Mississippi Valley State. I tell you what, if you've got a guy who can eat glass like that, somebody on his team better get back. Nobody else should be that's getting right. back. Absolutely. That's exactly right. You don't keep him from going to that glass. There's a steal. And the numbers belong to the Hilltoppers. And the ball knocked out by Burwell, no foul. McDonald just hasn't been able to recapture the magic he had last week when he caught fire during that Sunbelt Conference tournament. 0 for 6 now, including all three misses from three point land. It's, uh, he's a key guy for them. No question about it, Steve. Fans back on the floor with the four fouls. Got the size advantage here, but there's help. And there's a foul against the Delta Devils. Called on Arrington. His third. Fan will be at the line. We're talking to the folks from Western Kentucky yesterday. They talked about how much weight he has lost in the last two months of the season. Very unusual. Steve, you said, I haven't heard anything like that. Almost 20 pounds since January. Yeah, that's something Ray Harper made a priority. He said when he took over the job, he didn't feel like the team was in good enough shape. So he really put Fant on a conditioning program. But yeah, normally that happens in the offseason, not, not in midseason. But it sure helped him. He's been really a good player for them he last month. Sure, he sure has been. I mean, he's a force. He comes at you relentlessly. He's got pretty good hands. I love his motor. You just watch him. He's um, engaged and going at you. As Burwell to help break this game open. And they keep possession here in a new fresh 35. Arrington 
Takes it to the paint. Banks it home. Beautiful shot. Perfect possession there. Used up most of the clock and still ended up with a bucket. And yet another turnover. Up ahead, Joyner gives it to the trailer. Cox gets the roll off the back of the rim. And the lead's back up now to 16. Actually, biggest of the game. Price, back of the rim on a three. Gordon. Fant is fouled on the shot. In transition, here's Joyner recognizing that Cox was behind him and a tough, well-executed finish that time by Corje. He's had a few spectacular finishes tonight. Fant, the Sun Belt Tournament, most outstanding player. He had 17 in the championship game against North Texas. That got him into the tournament. Their fourth win in four nights. Jim, in that game, when they were down 13, he scored seven points himself to kind of be the catalyst in that come from behind win. I think Ray Harper felt like he had an advantage on the front line in this game, just with his depth with Fant and a Cole and Zolo. But good credit to the Delta Devils between Crosby, Stunavan, and then the smaller Cox. They really kind of controlled the paint area. That is a quick basket by Gordon. They made the steal off the this free throw. Trim at the 13. That ball knocked loose and into the hands of Gordon. You need not be attacking there without an advantage. That's going to be a foul on Crosby, and that'll send Crook to the line. Four on Crosby. Still got 429 to play here. Exactly. There was no reason for Pew to attack without a man advantage, and there you see the foul on Crosby as Crook heads to the hoop, and Sean Woods wants to call a timeout to talk about it. Very disappointed with that last turnover. Free throws coming up for the Hilltoppers, down 13. 429 left. President Obama, Prime Minister Cameron, with 420 to play. Watching Mississippi Valley State in Western Kentucky to tip off the 2012 NCAA tournament on the road to New Orleans. Well, if you're on uh, Mississippi Valley State here, you and I were just talking, Steve. Just use your head, be smart, handle the ball, spread it out, and don't force bad shots. That's Pew missing on the driving, slashing shot. Western Kentucky has ratcheted up the intensity here in the last minute. Well, they believe they can come back, Jim. I mean, that's all they've done throughout the Sun Belt Conference tournament. They think they can come back. They believe that a double-digit lead is not insurmountable. That was Fant with the basket. Six unanswered by the Hilltoppers. Don't forget, Mississippi Valley State had about a 20-point lead as we see another turnover. But in that SWAC final, they had a 20-point lead and gave up almost all of it. Ended up winning that game by two points. Well, another turnover by the Delta Devils. We got the under four media timeout. Ball belongs to Western Kentucky when we come back. Welcome back to the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual, along with Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, Tracy Wolfson, Jim Nance here in Dayton, Ohio. And Coach Woods squaring off against Coach Harper. It's got a little sloppy here for Mississippi Valley State in the last couple of minutes. They totally lost their spacing offensively. I mean, they haven't handled the traps well at all. That's Price Prime and in and one. That's eight unanswered now for the Hilltoppers. How things have suddenly changed. Big time, Jim. This guy's been getting to the hole all game long. He just hasn't been finishing, but you see how strong he is. He gets into that lane with those shoulders squared. You're not going to keep him from getting it up on the rim. And he just went right through Arrington. And then Fannin, in an effort to get over to congratulate his teammate, gave 
Arrington an incidental bump. He has fouled out with seven points and seven steals. But he's finished for the night. Here's Price. They can trim it to seven and does. Wow. This thing has turned drastically. And what you said, Steve, is exactly right. The inability of Mississippi Valley State to handle this harassing defense. There's a foul on Gordon. It'll be a one and one. So free throw shooting becomes the issue for Mississippi Valley State. If they're strong with the ball and move it and space the floor, yeah. you're going to get a shot or you're going to get fouled. And then it's a matter of knocking down your free throws. But if you play on your heels mm -hmm. and the aggressive defense is going to disrupt you and force turnovers. But you've got to space the floor right. and get to your spots. Right. right. You know, I, I'm not sure I ever believed in the old adage, press a team that that likes to press you know that like pressing teams don't want to be pressed themselves but that seems to be the case right here nine out of 20 on the night from the line Mr. Kentucky lucky to save it here and now they don't they turn it over their 26th turnover of the game and that's a season high well that's a big one too I mean I Come mean I, it's amazing that they're within seven I mean, 26 <laughs> giveaways yeah and they're within Two, three possessions. There you go. Noel spins around. Get it swung. You got to get it to the opposite side. The ball moving from side to side goes much faster than bodies will. Burwell has it taken away. A comedy comes in and dunks it down to five. Well, over dribbling again. He thought he was going to spend, got bumped, but he turned into the defender. Akamane was just in solid position. And then this is just carelessness. Pew, a one hand pass right in the middle of a defender. And, and what is his teammate doing right, right next to him? him? Crowding him, exactly. Camp with two. Gets the roll on the first one. Hey, I'm, you've got to give credit to Western Kentucky. They haven't stopped. But anytime you cough up a 16 point lead this quickly, you're cooperating with the opponent. It was 16 at the 452 mark. Now it's down to three. 13 unanswered. In two minutes. Burwell lost the handle. That puts it up. No. And here come the Hilltoppers. Gordon driving in. Down the one. No stopping them. Timeout, Mississippi Valley State. A spectacular turnaround here. 16 down with less than five minutes to play, and now it's a one point Mississippi Valley State lead. Mississippi Valley State with 228 to play. Unbelievable comeback. I mean, it, Mississippi Valley State is, has burned three timeouts here during this run, and each time they've come out looking disorganized. They just have not been able to get to their spots, and we see the carelessness with which they're handling the ball. It's just shocking. It really is. 14 Boy. unanswered by the Hilltoppers. And let's see if this last timeout will finally settle down. No, another takeaway. And then the foul, the reach in foul against Joyner. His third. He'll be shooting two. It's the double bonus. Remember, this is the senior laden team, Mississippi Valley State. They've got seniors on the floor right now, but they're the ones who look like freshmen. They're rough. They're, they're flustered, rattled. Bamboozled, confused. And the Hilltoppers just keep Hilltopping. Gordon can <laughs> tie it with this free throw. And they will have one more. Panchkovich comes in. Luka Panchkovich 
a freshman from Serbia. He's only seen a couple of minutes of action. He checks in. Gordon with 11 points all in the second half. Wow. Short with both of them. Yeah, he showed on both of those. And that might give Mississippi Valley State the reprieve it needs. Burwell slips and is right back to the Hilltoppers. They've got a five on three. Gordon in the lane. And a foul called the basket. It fell through. They wave it off. Boy, Gordon had a chance to give a teammate a layup, I thought. I like his aggressiveness, but he had a chance to create a layup right there to the left. There was somebody open. Let's take a look at it again. See, I thought, well, no, I'm, I'm mistaken. I thought Crook had moved to the Crook stayed in the corner. He did, he did stay out. Timeout, Western Kentucky. We'll be going back to the line for two more when we come back. Two minutes to play. We're coming out of a Western Kentucky timeout. Gordon will be going back to the line for two shots after coming up well short just a few moments ago with two attempts at the line. It's astonishing how short these possessions have been for Mississippi Valley State. I mean, the ball was turned over within seconds. They haven't gotten a shot, Jim. Gordon, a 70% free throw shooter on the year. It's about lifting it up a little higher here. And he should be focusing on getting that ball up a little more. Well, when you're short, you're tired. The legs are tired, and I thought that might be one of the reasons why Coach Harper called the timeout to give his free throw shooter a chance to catch his breath. Great point, Jim. In this furious timeout that he's, this, this furious comeback that he's helped lead. So that's three in a row that are just off the front of the rim. Got to make the adjustment now. Bend the knees. Get, get exactly. a little extra something there. There he is. He's doing it this time. And he's 0 for 4. But Mississippi Valley State can't handle it. It goes off their hands and out of bounds. Western Kentucky has not led since 4 to 2 in the opening minutes of this game. They feed it inside, and Cox has the steal. And it's going to be a reach in on Western Kentucky. Wow. You got a chance to take the lead in a lazy post feed down the middle of the lane with defenders all over the place. You got four free throws at the line, four times to yeah. tie it or possibly take the lead. Now, poor Jay Cox will be shooting two. Double bonus on both sides. Just a battle of attrition. 154 to go. Eight. Given up 15 unanswered. And that one twice tried to go in and rattles out. Cox has had the two highlight reel dunks in this half. Now just trying to get the free point. And he does. The lead is back to two. Fam, give it back the hands of Gordon to Crook. And Western Kentucky again trying to tie it or take the lead on this possession. They're going to try to post up Fenton and they threw it away. Gordon was rushing, anticipating that Fenton was going to be where he wasn't. But in that situation, you've got to just handle the ball and wait until your post guy's ready. Burwell feeds it to the side. And here's a jumper short, pulled down by Price. Got a man open up ahead. McCombinay, he's blocked. Crook with the putback. The game is tied with 1.14 to go. 54, 54. Timeout, Mississippi Valley State. So they've come all the way back from 16 down with 4.52 to play. Furious rally, and this ties it. Well, Steve Kerr, you make a good point. Getting the info from Pat McGrath, our stats man extraordinaire. No timeouts left for the Delta Devils. I don't think Sean Woods wanted that one either, but Burwell felt like he was in a little trouble in the backcourt, and you can't blame him given the turnover problems that his team has had. But that's it. 
And so they're on their own the rest of the game. Two timeouts on the other side. And a minute and six to go. Chased down by Fant. What a block. McCominay was the one who blocked it. Fant on the baseline. Over to Crook. Swinging it around. Gordon with the three. No. Short again. It's Crook. Dishing inside. And no foul. No foul. They call it jump. A tie-up situation. The arrow stays at this end. How about Here the comes block? Joyner. This is a terrific block. Okamane. And then an excellent play here as it looked like Cox and Crosby both got a hand on that shot attempt from Okamane. Timeout Western Kentucky. They have one remaining. Western Kentucky will inbound with 32 seconds on the shot clock, 46 seconds to go. A tie game, guys, give me a little strategy. You're looking for a high quality shot, although we have not seen many <laughs> no, we throughout haven't. the ball game. And certainly in this last four minutes, I don't know if I've ever seen a game change so drastically. That being said, you've got the ball, you got 32 seconds, plenty of time. I think Western Kentucky takes it inside to Fenn. He's a pretty good free throw shooter, and he's pretty poised if they get it to him in position to score. On the other hand, if you're Mississippi Valley State, I think you've got to be ready to pressure the ball, know they want to get it in to Fant, and then maybe back off and see if somebody can make a perimeter shot, but do everything you can to keep it from going inside to Fant or even a Cole. But I think they're going to play through Fant. If you're wondering how a team can overcome 28 turnovers like Western Kentucky, you do it by out-rebounding the opponent, plus 30 so far on the game. I mean, these numbers are just... I mean, this is like video game <laughs> these kind of numbers. There's the ball into the hands of Gordon. Out to Crook. Coach Harper has them taking their time. Gordon feeds it. On the pass, Price. Still plenty of time. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Now, Mississippi Valley State, if in fact Western Kentucky scores, or even if they don't, no timeouts. No timeouts. No timeouts. They've got to be ready to make a play. And Western Kentucky has to be careful with their transition defense. Everybody's crowding the glass. Price puts it up and in for the lead. And a foul. Wow. Pugh committing the foul. Crook fed it on the inbounds play. And Price. Knocked it down and heads to the line. Really well executed out of bounds play, freeing up Price. And now a huge free throw here. Boy, he's been a man around that goal. He hasn't made them all, but boy, he made a big one there. And now for the first time tonight, the Hilltoppers have a three point lead. A 21 to 2 run. Pick and pop. They played it well. This could tie it. Burwell back of the rim. And a ball into the hands of Krupp. And a whistle. There is a large Western Kentucky contingent here. It's about a four and a half hour drive from Bowling Green to Dayton. And they are 16 seconds away. The Hilltoppers from finding themselves only 90 minutes from campus on Thursday for a little battle of the Commonwealth. Let's gotta, see if they can finish it. Got to make some free throws first. Look at the line again. Double bonus. Two shots coming. No timeouts again. One more time. Mississippi Valley State. The Delta Devils looked like they were on their way to their first ever NCAA tournament win in school history. 16 up with 4.52 to play. Two possession game now. Whatever you do, you got to go fast. It doesn't have to be a three, but you got to go quick. Burwell inside. Beautiful move. Down to two. 11.8 seconds. Brooke is fouled by Joyner. Two at the other end coming. Nice job by Burwell 
to keep the Delta Doubles, doubles in the game. Brooks will be at the line for two. They've got four Hilltoppers all the way back at the other end of the floor. 63% on the season. Now, now the one that will be so crucial. Price comes all the way up to congratulate him on that make and retreats. Still a chance, a three to tie with eight seconds. Delta Devils need the three. It's Joyner to Burwell from the corner. It's long, the put back, block, put back again, drops, but it's not enough. Western Kentucky pulls off one of the great comebacks you'll ever see in NCAA tournament history. They're going to count the basket to make it a one point final. They're just going to double check to see once the ball went through the net, was there any time left at all? And this was inexcusable for them to leave Burwell knowing that you had to have a three. Gordon gets lucky because Burwell misses it. And then no time. Yeah, no, no time. time. That's it. That's ball game. One of the most colossal. Turnarounds and collapses I've seen ever, right? Ever, ever. In, in any gym at any time. How many times do you see a 16 point comeback with 450 to play in a game? Especially when the team on top had such control of it. You've just witnessed that tonight here in Dayton. Western Kentucky outscores Mississippi Valley State 22 to 5 at the end to take the game and advance to Louisville for a second round matchup against the Kentucky Wildcats. Hard to imagine. And they've been doing it, talking about Western Kentucky, all, all through the Sun Belt Tournament, all through the closing stretches of the season. I don't know how they've done it, these double-digit comeback. What a great shot that is. It really is, Coach yeah. Harper trying to console Kevin Burwell of Mississippi Valley State. Coach Harper, who said it was always his dream to be a coach here, grew up in Bremen, Kentucky, about 60 miles north up near Owensboro. Kentucky, where he led Kentucky Wesleyan to a couple of Division II national championships. He got the job full time, took over a team that was 5 and 11 before the coaching change. He's now the full time coach, and he's got one of the great wins you'll ever want to see. Without question, Jim. What an effort by this team. They just did not give up. Kept fighting, kept scratching and clawing. And the president. Somebody needs to get a shot of that, a camera shot of that. There you go. Well, he attended a memorable one here tonight to lead off the tournament. What a way to begin the road to New Orleans. And Steve Kerr, take it away. Ray, how do you explain what just happened? Steve, uh, you know, I keep telling people about these kids. They won't quit. They're resilient, and they didn't want to go home. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I probably should have started pressing a lot earlier in the game. What what happened? I mean, you're down. You're, you're basically playing a really bad basketball game for about, about 32 minutes. You start pressing. You feel the energy. At what point did you feel like you could actually win this thing? Well, when we started get, turning them over and getting some easy baskets, we played totally out of character for about 35 minutes. I thought we, we played one-on-one -on -one basketball, and that's not who we are. But, you know, give these kids credit. They, they hung in there, and they made plays down the stretch. I know the energy of TJ and the rest of the guys down the stretch was big. You have to be happy with the play of this guy. TJ, tell me what you were thinking. Five minutes to go. It looks like it's over, but you helped bring him back. I mean, never quit. Coach keep on notice. He always tell us, don't worry about it. Relax. Calm down, keep playing hard, never give up. We gonna win this game. That's all he's telling me. 
he got confidence in us, so we got to have confidence in ourselves and have heart. Did you have fun playing in front of President Obama? Oh, yes, sir. It was, it, was, it was good. It was good. Ray, you got Kentucky next. <laughs> Uh, uh, what do you feel about the Wildcats? There are a lot of, lot of fans from both seat, sides in town that day in Louisville. Well, they're the number one overall seed for a reason, and uh, we're just happy that we're moving on. And one of my friends texted me the other day and said, be careful what you wish for, but we're happy we're still playing. I'm excited about these young men. All right, congrats on an unbelievable Thank comeback, you. guys. All right, back to you. Thank you, Steve. He's still never lost as the full-time head coach. He's 7-0. He's got the sixth youngest team in the nation this year out of the 330 some odd Division I schools. And he's got one memorable comeback. That one won't be forgotten. From 16 down to victory. The first four continue shortly with Iona and BYU. We'll send you to Atlanta in a moment.